Hello my lovely friends! My name is Ava and today I have some fantasy romance recommendations for y'all. If you don't know me, I'm a big lover of fantasy romance. Here are just some of them back here. We're gonna be pulling from this shelf in a second here. Um, but I love fantasy romance. It's probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite, subgenre of romance besides alien romances, which is right next to that section. So I'm excited for this video, okay? I actually have a part one for this, so I'll link that down below where I recommend kind of like the staples and my first loves of fantasy romance. They're down below for you if you want to check that out. But I have 10 more recommendations for you today, so let's get started. First, I want to mention a series that I haven't finished yet, but... I, I need to finish it, I know. That is the Between Dawn and Dusk series by Jamie Schlosser. These books are on Kindle Unlimited. I don't think the novella is like book 0.5, but all the other ones are. I actually have the novella right here. This is Between Dawn and Dusk. So book one is The Fake King's Curse. And this book is a novella about the hero from this book, how his parents are fated mates and fell in love. And I recommend reading this book second to this one because like you get more information in book one. This book is way longer by the way and this is just a novella. So we're gonna be talking about book one. In this fantasy land there are these witches and they cursed the royal families of their land so the princes would all be blind until they found their fated mate. However there's like this rule and stipulation where you can only find your fated mate when you look into their eyes. But how can you do that? if you cannot see. So there's a lot of different things going on here to prevent these men from finding their mates. So Kyrian is one of those princes that was cursed. So when he's young, he ends up uh, going into a portal to our world, Earth. And he ends up falling into a river on accident. And this little girl who's around his age, I don't wanna say they're like 11 or 12, saves him from drowning in this river. And um, she realizes that Kyrian is from this fantasy land and they become very close friends. And they see each other in her time every single day. However, one day on earth equals one year in Kyrian's fantasy land. So every single day Kyrian is aging a whole nother year while Quinn is staying the same essentially. Um, I know it's a little confusing, but it makes a lot of sense when you read the book and it is so stinking good. So essentially by the time Quinn is, I think wanna say 18, 19, she's about to go off to college and Kyrian is at this point hundreds of years old. They are very close friends. They're best friends basically. And she comes up to him one day and is like, I have to leave for college. I won't see you for a while. And he's like, well, how long till I see you again? She was like 90 days, three months, like I'm gonna be away at college. And he's like, that's gonna be like 90 years to me. I can't do that. So he takes her and brings her into his fantasy land where he is the king of. And um, it is so good, okay? The fate of mate aspect in here is really great as well because um, our heroine like knows about the curse and everything. If these heroes, if these guys, kiss somebody that is not their fated mate, they will be doomed to be blind forever, even if they end up finding their mate later on in life. So she's like, I can't ever kiss this man or tell him how I'm feeling because she does have feelings for him um, because I don't want to doom him to a life of not being able to see, you know, for the rest of his life. But Kyrian knows deep in his soul that Quinn is his. And um, he's trying to show her that. And he does not care if he can never see again because he just wants Quinn and oh, so swoony, so swoony. Okay, so that's book one. Um, and then there's three other books in the series other than the novella. The novella is about Kyrian's parents falling in love in this fantasy land. It's rivaling families, Romeo and Juliet-esque. Love this one too. And next we have Entreat Me by Grace Draven. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Grace Draven is the goddess, the queen of fantasy romance. If you have not read a Grace Draven yet, you need to sort out your priorities and get on it immediately. So Lou is a widow, I believe. And um, she has been kind of living with her father and her younger sister living with them, taking care of them. Her sister, Sienna, 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 I don't know how to say her name, I'm so sorry. Um, she finds out that Sienna has run away with a man she thinks she's in love with named Gavin. And Lou being the older protective sister is like, uh-uh, that's not happening. She goes to track her down, find her, finds her in this basically rundown castle that is cursed. And there she meets Ballard, who is Gavin's 
father. Now he is the beast in this scenario. He has been cursed by his dead wife, who was a witch, and she cursed Ballard and her son on her deathbed. And so this is kind of like a two romance story in one. You have Sienna, Sienna and Gavin um, getting together as well as Ballard and Lou getting together. And this is a great Beauty and the Beast retelling. It's one of my favorites ever. The atmosphere is amazing. The writing is amazing. Grace Draven is amazing. Just the story she's told. And just like, I love the relationship between Ballard and Lou. It was beautiful. If you want a fantasy romance that is an amazing Beauty and the Beast retelling, you need to pick this one up. Next, I have the Fallen Empire series by Grace Draven. Um, this <laughs> series is just amazing. I can't get enough of Grace Draven, so I'll talk about her any day of the week. I love her. I've read the first two books in the series. Book three is not out yet. It comes out later this year, um, and I'm so excited for it, okay? So book one is Phoenix Unbound. This one is a kidnapping romance. Jolene in here is a fire witch, and in this empire fantasy land that she's in, um, a woman, a young woman from every village is required to sacrifice themselves um, to the empire to be burned at the stake. And so Jolene has these powers where she's able to disguise herself and make herself look like another person and not be burned in a fire. And so every year she's been going, I think for the past five years, and no one has noticed that she's been disguising herself as a new woman every day to save those in her village. And then Azarion, who is a gladiator slave, a part of the empire, is the first person to notice that Jolene has been here before. And he realizes that she has magic and he's like, she is the perfect opportunity for me to escape slavery and go back to my village and take my rightful place as the ruler of this village. So he ends up kidnapping Jolene, taking her back to his village and having her help him claim his place as kind of like the leader of this village. The magic system in this book specifically is amazing. I love it. Jolene and her fire magic was amazing as well. It was beautiful. I love the kidnapping part in here. I love kidnapping romances where one of the characters kidnaps the other person. They obviously bicker and banter the entire time they're being kidnapped. <laughs> and it's like a road trip romance too. And so like he's kidnapped her while like taking her to his village. And so um, there's just a bunch of funny shenanigans going on in here as well as some steamy time, some tension beautiful amazing then book two is dragon unleashed these are like companion romances so the characters in like one of the characters in book two has popped up in this book so i recommend reading them in order just because also the uh, magic system in the world gets like introduced in this book and if you jump into book two you will not hate the villain in this book as much as you should because you should hate her with a fiery passion for what she did in this book and that's not really mentioned in book two. So you need to read book one, I recommend, before you read book two. But I personally loved book two even more than book one. Um, this one is a dragon shifter romance. This one centers around Malachus and Halani. So Halani is actually a healing witch. And um, she comes across Malachus beaten and bloody on the verge of death one day at this uh, kind of like fair they've been to. Um, but she is in like a traveling caravan with her mother and um while they're traveling they come across Malachus she decides to help him to save him and little does she know that Malachus is a dragon shifter who's on a mission to find something when Malachus was younger his mother bound him to his kind of like human form and the only way he's able to shift to his dragon form is if he has this one object however someone stole that object so he's not been able to shift into his dragon form so he's been on the hunt to find this object he ends up meeting halani along the way she ends up saving his life and um they end up falling for each other i just loved this one so much especially with the side characters grace Shevin's side characters are amazing they're just as good as the main characters um halani has a mother named azel and She's one of my favorite characters of all time. She is a woman who has the mind of a child. So when she was, I want to say in her teens, 20s, she was sexually assaulted. And that's how she had Halani. Um, she does not have the mental capabilities to function as an adult on her own. So her daughter, her, her grown daughter now takes care of her. She is just everything. I love her so much. She's one of my favorite characters of all time. And the way that Malachus treats Halani's mother is everything. Everything. 
amazing. Love it. And then book three, I have not read it yet because it hasn't come out yet, but that one's I think Raven's something and the cover is gorgeous. So excited for this release. Then I have the Aspect and Anchor series by Ruby Dixon. Yes, Ruby Dixon has written fantasy romance books, okay? I recommend starting with book number 0.5, which is The King's Spinster Bride. A new cover was just made. I love it, adore it. This one is the prequel to the series all about Princess Hala, who used to be princess of this land, um, but then it got taken over because her father was being greedy and he ended up kidnapping the son to a, a Cyclops clan. Princess Hala decided to make sure to protect this boy while they were, while her father was kidnapping him essentially. And this little boy has never forgotten about it. Um, whenever his father comes to rescue him, he sticks up for Hala and is like, she saved me. She made sure no one hurt me. Please don't kill her. And so Hala gets exiled instead of being killed. And so it's been years since she has been in this kingdom. She um, now lives in somewhat of a nunnery and the little boy is now all grown up and is ready to be king and find a wife. His name is Matthew and he's never forgotten about Hala. So he decides to go find Hala at this nunnery and tell her that he wants her as his wife. And they have to go through some barbarian marriage customs that are very fun to read about. <laughs> if you want like an amazing, amazing fantasy romance novella, this is it. This is it. It is amazing. Um, this is an age gap romance where the woman is older and it was so good. So stinking good. The way that Matthew literally worships the ground that Hollow walks on is amazing. The main books in this series are all very long. They're like 600 pages. I recommend listening to the audiobooks for these. Um, first is Bound to the Battle God and then um, book two is Sworn to the Shadow God. So each book in the main series is basically about a human woman from our time, our earth, getting sucked through a portal into the same fantasy land that this book takes place in. And they have to be mortal anchors to gods that have been cast down from kind of think of Olympus. Their fathers cast them down from Olympus to punish them. And they are there to like anchor them to the mortal realm. And yeah, they go on a bunch of journeys and treks and it's uh, both of them I think are like hate to love, dislike to love romances. Book two, Sworn to the Shadow God is a lot of Hades and Persephone vibes because the hero is, um, the king of the underworld so there's also book three which is wed to the wild god i have not read that one yet because the audiobook is not out and then i have read the half orcs maiden bride by ruby dixon and this one doesn't connect really at all it just takes place in the same world none of the previous characters pop up or anything this is just an orc romance that i loved i read it recently loved it gave five stars and so this book has a lot of the same marriage customs that this book has which is something that I absolutely loved. Um, so I really recommend this one if you're wanting a fantasy romance with orcs in it. If you've never read an orc romance, this one is a great place to start. He's a sweet bean. She is a tall plus size heroine who thinks that no man would ever love her. And our heroine here just wants her so bad and thinks she is the hottest thing he's ever seen. The next series that I have is a Gathering of Dragons series. So the first one is A Heart of Blood and Ashes by Mila Vane. Um, there's three books in the series. I know there is a prequel called The Beast of Blackmore. I haven't read this one yet. Um, I have heard not to read this one first, so I haven't read it first. And then there's this book. This is book one. This one's about Maddox and Yvan. This is a marriage of convenience, hate to love romance. If you have not read this yet and you love fantasy romance books, you need to get on it because you will love this. Okay, so Maddox, his parents have passed. They've been killed. He thinks that Yven, who is the daughter to a rivaling king, is the reason why they are dead. However, he goes to hunt down for her and Yven is actually looking for him. She comes across him and it's like, hey, I didn't kill your parents. I'm not the reason your parents are dead, but my father is and I want to get back at him for all the crappy things he's done to me in my life. And so how about we get married so we can take over his throne? And so that's what they do. Even though Maddox like still thinks Yvan is in the wrong and thinks that she's the reason why his parents are dead, um, he reluctantly agrees because he thinks that her plan makes sense. He just doesn't like her. And man, there's a lot of hate screwing in here. <laughs> which is super fun to read about. And just this world is amazing. I love it. And Yvonne in here is one of my favorite heroines ever. She is so 
strong and amazing. She um, was abused by her father and um, she walks with a limp now. And just like the way that she carries herself, um, cause she's this very petite woman that no one assumes on the outside with her limp and with how small she is, that she could ever be a queen. But man, she is the strongest queen ever. And Maddox slowly starts to realize that and starts to put his foot in his mouth when he realizes that he was maybe wrong about her. And it's so good, okay? I've also read book two, which is A Touch of Stone and Snow. This one is a uh, friends to lovers romance taking place in the same world as this. I think all of them take place in the same world, but I've not seen like the connection with characters yet. I think that we're gonna get that in later books. Our heroine was cast out um, from this city because of something that happened. She's the lone survivor of this attack and they think that she's in the wrong. Um, and then our hero in here is her longtime childhood best friend. They've been pining over each other for years and have been basically waiting for the other person. They know that this person is their best friend and soulmate and they don't want anybody else. Um, and so he has basically come across her years later after she's been cast out and um, they have to work together to complete a mission. It is very good. There's an adorable snow cat in here. It is just so sticking good. I love Mila Vane and the way that she writes her books. And then book three, A Dance of Smoke and Steel comes out later in 2022, which I am very excited for. Next, I have His Beauty by Jack Harbin. This is a novella fantasy romance. And it's another Beauty and the Beast retelling as well. However, the beast in this situation never turns into a man. <laughs> so yeah, that's about it. That's all I wanna tell you. It's a novella, I don't wanna spoil anything. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling where the hero is always the beast. I loved this, I thought it was so fun. Um, and if you love fantasy romance novellas, this is definitely one you should pick up. Next is one I wish more people would read, okay? We have A Fate of Wrath and Flame by K.A. Tucker. This one is so good. It's so good. I read this over the summer, I wanna say of 2021, with Tori from Novel Life. And buddy reading this book was one of the best things I could have done because it was one of my favorite buddy reading experiences I've ever had. This book is so much fun to buddy read because there's so many plot twists and twists and turns you would have never saw coming and like it is so much fun to read with somebody so i really recommend buddy reading this if you haven't read it yet book two comes out this summer and i am so ready for it i hope tori and i can buddy read it together um but this one is so stinging good it's a little confusing because at the beginning like it doesn't seem like a fantasy romance because it takes place on earth However, it then gets put into a fantasy land, okay? Then it's a fantasy book. <laughs> I don't wanna talk about this book too much because I feel like anything that I say could be a spoiler. And like, you want to know as little about this book as possible before going in because the plot twist and the shock value in this book is what makes it a lot of the time. Okay, so Romarian here, she is the thief in our land and she ends up by some means getting put into a fantasy land where she's been put into her doppelganger's body. So in this fantasy land, there is a Princess Romeria and she has done some messed up stuff. And so she's being blamed for all these things that have happened to these people when it wasn't her, it was her doppelganger. The doppelganger Romeria was meant to marry King Xander of this place. She did some horrible things to him. And so now Xander hates her for something she didn't do. And she doesn't know what she did, like her doppelganger person doesn't know what she did. Anyway, there's a lot of more stuff going on here. There's so many magical elements in here. It is so stinking good. Go into this book completely blind with just what I said, because it is, it is so good. It is so good. And lastly, I forgot to mention this book when we were talking about Grace Draven books, but I do have another dragon romance by Grace Draven, which is called Wyvern. This is a novella by her. Elspeth in here is our heroine and she's a very talented fiddler. In her village, they have asked her to go tame this dragon that has wreaked havoc. Like they think that her fiddling skills are magical and can tame this beast. And so she goes to do just that because there's nothing else to do. And so she meets this dragon and this dragon really reminds her of her long lost love that she lost years ago, that she has never stopped thinking about. He may or may not be that person and has been cursed to be a dragon. I loved this. I love dragon romances, dragon shifter romances, fantasy romances <laughs> in general. Grace Draven is just amazing. And so 
I'll honestly love anything that she writes. So of course this book had to be on this list. But anyways, there you have it. Those are some fantasy romance recommendations for you. Please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a fairy emoji down in the comments. Also leave me any fantasy romance recommendations down below. I'd love, love, love some more recommendations. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.